Here we're going to do another example to try and solidify the understanding of the van der Waals equation. Remember, van der Waals recognized that when you put gas in a container, the molecules themselves take up a little bit of volume so that the volume here in the ideal gas equation isn't quite correct when you could relate that to the volume of the occupation of the gas molecules. And secondly, the intermolecular forces between the molecules also cause the pressure that you would measure not to be quite the pressure that you want to put into the ideal gas equation to work out your problems. So he wanted that adjustment factor. And the adjustment factor by Van der Waal were, were calculated to be these, where A and B are simply constants associated with the particular gas. N is the number of is the number of moles of the gas, and V is the volume of the container. So let's say we have 15 moles of nitrogen gas placed in a 10 liter container at 100 degrees centigrade. What will be the measured pressure? Now you say, well, let's calculate first the ideal pressure. Using the ideal gas, the ideal gas equation, we can say that the pressure is equal to nRT divided by the volume. And if we plug in the numbers, we have how many moles of gas? We have, uh, let's see, 15 moles of gas. And we multiply times the constant, which is 8.314. That would be joules per mole times Kelvin times the temperature, 100 degrees centigrade. We add that to 273, we get 373 Kelvin. And then we divide the whole thing by the volume. We have a 10 liter container. So that would be 0 0.010 meters cubed. Remember that there's a thousand liters that fit into a cubic meter. And I'm using standard units here. So when we work this out, we get 15 times 8.314 times 373 and divide that by 0 0.01 equals. And so we have something in the order of uh, 4,650,000 50, let's say 652,000 pascals. So that's newtons per square meter, that is standard units. Of course, remember that there's 101,325 uh, pascals to the atmosphere per atmosphere. So we want one atmosphere. We divide that by 101,325 pascals. And now when we do that calculation, we get the pressure in atmosphere. So divide this by 101,325 and we get 45.9 atmospheres. So the ideal gas equation tells me that that is the pressure inside that container, the pressure of the gas. If you now go ahead and measure that pressure of that gas, you will not get that number. Van der Waals understood that because this, of course, 15 moles stuffed into a 10 liter container, that is a pretty dense gas. A very high pressure, 45.9 atmospheres. So what was the adjustment factor? What kind of factor do we have? What will be the measured pressure, and maybe I should put a D behind that so the English is a little bit more proper. All right, so we're going to figure out the adjustment factor here, the change, the change in the pressure. So the change in the pressure is equal to A N squared over V squared. So for, for uh, let's see, nitrogen gas, the A is 1.39, so the 1.39, and the units are atmospheres liters squared divided by the moles squared. So that's the factor associated with nitrogen gas. Number of moles, we have 15 moles. So we take 15 moles and we square that number and we divide the whole thing by the volume. We have 10 liters, so 10 liters and we square that as well. All right, so what adjustment factor do we get on the pressure? 1.39. Uh, times 15 squared, which is 225, and divided by 100, which is 10 squared. And notice that the adjustment factor here is 3 point, uh, let's just round it off to 3.1 atmospheres. All right, so that's the change in the pressure. What does that mean? Well, that means that the ideal pressure is going to be the measured pressure plus the adjustment factor. But since we already calculated the, the ideal pressure and we calculated the change in the pressure, we can use that to find the measured pressure. So notice that the measured pressure, pre, P measured, is equal to the uh, ideal pressure, pressure ideal, minus the adjustment factor, the delta P. And so in, in reality, if you then were to measure that with a pressure gauge, you would measure pressures 45.9 atmospheres minus 
the 3.1 atmospheres. So this would be equal to 42.8 atmospheres. And that is the pressure you would actually measure, not the ideal pressure that you just calculated with your equation. So here comes the difficulty. If you were to put 15 moles of nitrogen gas in a 10 liter container at 100 degrees centigrade, and you were to measure that pressure, you would measure 42.8 atmospheres. If you then take that value and plug it into your ideal gas equation with the pressure, you're going to get all kinds of wrong results. You have to adjust that by realizing, oh, wait a minute, my pressure value isn't my ideal gas pressure. I have to add to the measured value the 3.1 atmospheres to get to 45.9, and I plug this value into my ideal gas equation to get all the correct numbers. How about the adjustment for the volume? We put the gas in a 5 liter container, and of course that's the ideal volume. But what is the actual volume available to the molecules, the empty space left when you put all that gas in there because the molecules take up some space as well. So the delta volume is equal to n times b, n times b, and uh, b is of course this number right here for nitrogen, n is the number of moles, which is 15 moles, so we have 15 moles and we're going to multiply that times B, which is right here, 0 0.0391 units are liters per mole. And so we have 15 times 0 0.0391 equals, and this is equal to 0. Point, let's say 59 liters. So that's the volume occupied by the molecules, which means there's only five liters minus that left for the actual molecules. So the, so the volume left for the molecules is equal to five liters minus 0 0.59 liters. So that's equal to 4.41 liters left. So that is the empty space left to the molecules. That's how the molecules will actually behave. Of course, in the ideal gas equation, we're going to use 5 liters because that's the, that's the quantity for the container, but realizing, wow, that's not going to give us the right value if we realize that this is the amount of volume that's left to the molecules. And that's how you do that.